firearm if he had one. I think it's reprehensible, and our law enforcement and the people of Nebraska deserve an apology. Thank you, Mr. President. Thanks, Senator McCoy. Senator Williams, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Lieutenant Governor. And I rise today to support uh, LB 627 and also both amendments, uh, Professor Shoemaker's Amendment 1047 and Senator Mello's Amendment 1032. I really appreciate the senators, in particular Shoemaker, Stinner, and Mello working together with the business community to fine tune this piece of legislation so that it not only provides the protection that we all want for the, the women in the workplace, but it also defines things in such a way that employers across our state can uh, make this a workable situation. So I would appreciate all senators uh, voting green on both amendments and the underlying LB 627. Thank you. Thanks, Senator Williams. Senator Chambers, you're recognized. Thank you. Mr. President, members of the legislature, Senator McCoy, in his brilliance, has given me the opportunity to sum up my attitude toward what he has said, Senator Schnoor, and all these others last Friday with a quote from Santa Claus. Ho, 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 It's the funniest, silliest, most childish, asinine, juvenile mess of rubbish that I've heard since I've been in the legislature. First of all, Senator McCoy got it wrong when he stood up the first day. He had accused me of attacking the military. He read an article that was gibberish. When I asked him to show where I'd attack the military, you notice he hasn't said that anymore. So he doesn't know what he's talking about, but consider the source. And I'm ready for him. And what it showed me is the kind of people who are on this floor. They will sit up here and have all kind of angers bubbling up inside. And then they say, he did something about my religion. Well, if I did, they had the opportunity to say it at that point, and they chose not to. Somebody else said, no other senator could get away with saying what Senator Chambers says. What is he talking about? He's got a mouth. He can say it. Who's stopping him? The only thing stopping anybody is a lack of backbone and will. I will continue to say what I think ought to be said in the way that I think it ought to be said. And I just wish you'd try to censure me. In fact, don't stop there. Expel me. You can try to expel me and show how petty, how juvenile, how childish this legislature is to make such a big thing out of this. And as one of the senators pointed out, and I've said a number of times, when Senator McCord suggested something bad ought to happen to the president by putting a bobblehead doll, bobblehead, bobblehead doll on a fence post and knocking it off, nobody said anything about that. And all of you suddenly full of indignation senators said nothing about what the Republican Party, your party did with Senator Ashford. Your party had a picture on television of a person in an orange jumpsuit on his knees and an individual purportedly a member of ISIS with a blade and connected Senator Ashford with ISIS. Not one of these self-righteous, holy Republicans on this floor who had so much to say Friday had anything to say about that because it was their party. When another Republican, the governor, of Wisconsin equated people protesting his action against union activity. When he linked them to ISIS, nobody said anything. Nobody said anything. So you're selective, and I know what I'm dealing with. But I tell you this much, I'll have no skid chains on my tongue. I don't care. People like Senator Lindstrom, thinks that because he took his name off a bill, that means something to me. It shows more about him than it does me. He gave the impression that he had some scruples relative to the death penalty. Principles. So because he doesn't like something that I said, all of his principles go out the window. So you know what kind of person you're dealing with there. You know how pointless all of those holy statements they make are. 
And as for religion, if I see something that ought to be commented on, I will. One minute. I saw where a panel, I believe appointed by the Vatican, are upset with the Pope because he appointed a guy who had covered up some sexual abuse of a bishop or one of those guys who wear the funny little red hats. Now there's a criticism of the Vatican and they think that because it's Catholic I shouldn't mention it. Well I care more about children than the rest of you apparently because I don't care who abuses a child. I'm going to have something to say about it. And my light is on so I shall continue this morning and however long since Senator McCoy decided to bring up the issue that I decide to do it. But if you think for one minute that I in any way intend to become a shrinking violet, you've got another thing coming. And keep this in mind, who threw the first stone? Keep that in mind when you all start getting upset. Time, Senator. Thank you, Mr. President. Senator Chambers, you are next in the queue. You may continue. I had two rhymes sent to me. One is disappointment. All, speaking of the, what they saw last Friday, all of them are prosecutors, you alone defendant. They are miffed because you stand defiant and unrepentant. No, don't let them have their way. There is nothing more I have to say. And here's one that I wrote. They're all wearing solemn faces, but still for my money, though I'm trying to take them seriously, they are just too funny. Funniest of all the inane performances was the silly whine ending with an ultimatum, I command you resign. Despite all their sound and fury, they are quite pathetic. Are all off their medication? bring some anesthetic. Some stood with their little signs, which they believed showed prudence. Based on what I've heard, they seemed like kindergarten students. Bring it, and I'll give it back to you. That's the way you want it to be? Well, that's the way it shall be. And as far as the police, ISIS paradigm. You can take it to the bank and take it face value the declaration by ISIS that they will take your head. But the same cannot be said about those who ride around in police cars with the painted slogan to protect and serve. You all haven't been around. You haven't experienced anything. So I will begin throughout the session to read you what some of these people you all think should not be criticized have done. I've criticized President Bush, Jimmy Carter, Barack Obama, various attorneys general, governors, and I'll continue to do it. But I'm something like Jesus, Pilate, and Herod were at odds. When they started messing with Jesus, Pilate didn't know what to do with him, so he sent him to Herod. And Herod's people mocked him. They wanted to hear him say something. They wanted to see him work a miracle, and he didn't say anything. So Herod sent him back to Pilate. And the book said that from that day forward, Herod and Pilate were friends, because before that, there was enmity between them. I'm looking at all these disparate entities and people and ragtag, bobtail, monkey see, monkey do, monkey hear, monkey repeat people who've all come together against me. I've caused them to forget all of their differences. There's the governor. There's a U.S. representative from Lincoln. There's the Nebraska attorney general the Omaha chief of police, the mayor of the city of Omaha, and a host of, of oh, and members of the legislature who, by the way, showed me what they're made of, carrying all that stuff around, grinning and skinning and acting like there is respect. 
then they use this as an excuse to bring up all this stuff from the past, all that hurt their feelings. My use of the term cricket hurt some people's feelings. One they got to grow up. They need to get some thickness of skin. You're not on a local city council. You're not on a local school board. You're not at a PTA meeting. But if you think you are, you need to be disabused of that impression. And I'm the one who can and will do it. Sometimes we mess with somebody and don't know who we're messing with, but we find out. Well, when you decide to provoke me, a challenge invites a response. For every action, there's an opposite and equal reaction. Thank you, Mr. President. Thanks, Senator Chambers. Senator Shoemaker announced the following guests are visiting legislature today, 25 fifth and sixth graders and four teachers from Clarkson Elementary School in Clarkson, Nebraska. Those students and teachers are in our north balcony. If we could ask them to please rise so that we could welcome you to our Nebraska legislature. Senator Chambers, this is your third opportunity, please. And this is my third time, and I don't want to overshadow Senator Shoemaker's amendment or Senator Mello's bill, although I could. I think I'm going to read a rhyme this morning that I wrote titled, Bo's Revenge Against Chambers, then in parenthesis below, beneath it, Emasculation of Duped deluded, used senators. Bo McCoy, the legislature's self-appointed leader, grinning like a Cheshire cat, felt nothing could be sweeter than to bring the senators obediently to heel. As they slouched with lolling tongues, great power he did feel. Unbeknownst to them, he'd use them to assuage his hurt, cunningly manipulating them to dig his dirt. Acting as a mob in concert, progress could be made, collectively doing what, as individuals, they'd be afraid. Self-delusion would convince them something they defended. By such process, their own fragile psyches could be mended. Bo, as he had done for Heinemann, would do for Ricketts. Ricketts, in return, would name him surrogate herder of crickets. Not since last election's trouncing rudely kicked his can had he felt like anything except a partial man. After all, despite the tons of cash in him invested, ignominiously and thoroughly had he been bested. Now, deluded senators were at his beck and call. He could make them sit and beg, play dead, or roll or crawl. Going through their paces, they were such a silly sight. Bo said, bark, they'd bark. And when Bo ordered bite, they'd bite. Bo had Chambers as his target. All knew why Bo picked him. Chambers often scourged him. For revenge, Bo on him sicked them. Some did yip, some did yap. Still others snuffed and growled. One particular senator deep-throatedly huffed and howled. Chaos and confusion reigned. They set up such a din. Chambers laughed and laughed and laughed, and then he laughed again. However you want to play the game, I will play it with you. However you want to play the game, I will play it with you. You started it. And we'll see just how far what you did leads me to go. How much time do I have, Mr. President? Two minutes, Senator. I'd like to ask Senator Shoemaker a question. Senator Shoemaker, would you yield, please? Yes, I will. Senator Shoemaker, this amendment that you're offering is not designed to indicate that you are a communist or you in any way support what communists may be doing in other countries, depriving people of their rights and so forth. Is that correct? That's correct. Thank you very much. Would anybody with common sense understand that? I don't know if we have much common sense sometimes. Thank you. These people on this floor are so simple-minded they don't know what an analogy is. What I was doing, and if they read it, they would see it. 
I was showing what a private citizen could not do and get away with, but on the other hand, what cops do all the time and get away with it. And I mean it, and I'll say it, and I'll say it again. But for now, I'll support Senator Shoemaker's amendment and Senator Mello's bill. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Senator Chambers. Senator Reapy announces the following guests are visiting the legislature today. Caitlin, Jacqueline, and Landon Prabella, all of Denver, Colorado, and they are up in our north balcony. If we could ask them to please rise, we can welcome you to, your, to our Nebraska legislature. Senator Schnorr, you're recognized. Thank you, sir. Good morning, everybody. Uh, I'd like to know if Senator Ch Chambers would yield to a question. Senator Chambers, would you yield, please? Yes, I will. Did you have a good weekend? Excellent. It was just too short. Do you feel better now after your three, five-minute I didn't feel bad. What? What's that? Say it again. I said, do you feel better now after, after your three, five-minute chances of trying to make fools out of everybody? Well, to feel better, that means you felt good. I felt well before this. Okay. Have you submitted your resignation yet? No, but I started to submit a resignation for you. You did? Well, I'd like to look at that first. Well, I haven't done it. I decided that was so silly, just like the original, that I should not replicate that. Okay. That's all the questions I have. Thank you. And, uh, and I also had a great weekend. Uh, had a a good day yesterday, and uh, you talked about uh, whatever we would do that, that you would uh, follow us. I think that's kind of not necessarily follow us, but you would uh, challenge us with, with whatever we do, and you would play along. Was that it, I believe? So uh, I'll just let you know, Senator Chambers, this weekend uh, at church, I was praying for you, and I will continue to pray for you, and you can laugh again all you want because you think religion, religion is ridiculous, but yet you quote the Bible every day when you're in here. So uh, I'll just, just uh, let you know that's what I'm doing for you. So that's all I have, sir. Thanks, Senator Schnorr. Senator Schumacher, you're welcome to close on AM 1047. Thank you, Mr. Lieutenant Governor. Uh, it repeals 48.1109, which is an archaic piece of our statutes, which uh, uh, dates back to McCarthyism and uh, references uh, long-repealed Federal Security Subversives Activities Control Board, and it's uh, an opportunity that we have now to take an archaic uh, piece of uh, legislation out of our statutes. Thank you. Thanks, Senator Shoemaker. The question is the adoption of AM 1047 to AM 1032. All those in favor, vote aye. Those opposed, vote nay. Have you all voted who care to? Record, please, Mr. Clerk. 28 days donated, Mr. President, on the adoption of Senator Shoemaker's amendment to Senator Mello's amendment. AM 1047 is adopted. Senator Chambers, you recognize. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. President. I really appreciate Senator Schnoor this morning. He's right, I do quote the Bible a lot. I read it, which a lot of people in here have not. Or if they have, they don't pay attention to it. But there is a verse that Senator Schnoor, believe it or not, made me think of. He said he's praying for me. Well, Jesus was in Jerusalem and some things were happening and the women were witnessing it and they began to cry. And you know what Jesus said? Weep not for me, daughters of, Re of Jerusalem, weep for yourselves. Don't pray for me, pray for yourself. Prayer, when you analyze it, is supposed to do more for the one doing the praying. And the idea is that while trying to be so magnanimous toward others and for others, the prayer may think about himself or herself. And instead of casting it out on the world, it's to be like a mirror. And as you walk toward that mirror, your own reflection is thrown back to you. 
And the closer you walk to the mirror, the closer you come to seeing what you really are. And when you're nose to nose with that reflection and you see everything, including the warts, then you might say, it is not my brother and my sister who needs prayer, but me, O oh Lord. There's a song that says that. Not my brother, not my sister standing in need, O oh Lord. So that might be my assistance for Senator Schnoor. And to let all of you who pray in here know why I say the things that I say in specific situations. I'm basing it on the book you all say you believe in. That book says, the fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. So the fact that nothing is being availed, either those who are praying are not righteous or their prayer is not fervent. But there is another verse that said, faith without works is dead. Maybe instead of doing all this praying, you ought to get up off your knees and get busy doing something to carry out the will of the one you claim to worship. That means you're interested in the widows. You're interested in the orphans. You're interested in those who are sick. And you should minister to the sick. And if any of you are strong, you should bear up the infirmities of the weak. That's what the one you worship said you should do. And I know what the one you worship said you should do, and that's why I can mock you. I'm not judging you. I'm going by what the one you worship said I ought to do. You know what he told me? Ernie, you'll know the tree by the fruit it bears. You don't gather fruit from a thistle. So I look at the fruit, and that's how I know the nature of the tree. Now, if you get angry at what I say, get angry at Jesus, and maybe you'll understand why those in his day crucified him. He had the same attitude some of you all have. He ought to be quiet. Don't condemn Rome. Don't condemn the wrong that the religious people are doing. Go along and get along like everybody else has done. They hung him on a tree. Then there was another guy. He was not a Christian. The disciples were first called Christians at Antioch. That's long after Jesus was gone. And the name was not applied as a compliment. It was given in derision. One minute. It was making fun. So this guy that I'm talking about named John I don't know that's what his name was, but I read it in a book. He lived in the wilderness. He didn't associate with people because he knew people didn't tell the truth. He knew they played games and they put on false fronts. They said they did not things they did not mean and they did not mean the things that they said. So he had a diet of locusts and wild honey. I may write a rhyme about the locusts because I think some locusts were mentioned in Genesis also in Egypt as one of the plagues. But what I was going to say, I need more time than this time so I have my light on again. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Senator Chambers. You are next in the queue. You may continue. So this fellow named John became known. Something brought him to the attention of people. And they wanted to lionize him, not mountain lionize him, because they would have chased him up a tree with dogs and then slaughtered him. And in some places, these great hunters like to trap one of these animals and cripple him first so that he can't have any kind of a chance. Then they set the dogs loose and he can't run as far before he scrambles to the extent that he can up a tree, then they shoot him. Most of these hunters are Christians, by the way. So this John was referred to not as a religious person, but the voice of one crying in the wilderness.